Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org consequence and the consequence podcast network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the series. You know what to do. If you uh, like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited today to be talking with one of mine, Crispin Mills, coolest shaker back with a brand new album called natural magic. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? <laughs> Coming through the portal. I forgot. Of course, it's it's the album's called Natural Magic, and 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 quite un, involuntarily and subconsciously, I'm wearing a Hogwarts scarf, and I had these Harry Potter glasses on. So, uh, it's obviously in the air. It's in the, it's the you know we just need to do what do a little lightning strike right here on your forehead, yeah. and you know we can yeah. <laughs> fix you up. Really, seriously, I I have loved everything that you all have done through the years. I've uh, I've been following since around the beginning, and this, I say this every now and then when you have a band that you appreciate and you love the music, and it's years down the road, and you hear there's going to be a new record. There's no guarantees. There's no guarantees that that magic is going to be there, and somehow you still find ways. And I'm sorry, no pun intended with the uh, the magic. But you still find ways to to kind of to, to have that that it's still there. This this record is fantastic, and I'm sure this is a dumb question to ask. But how how are you still able to capture that? Um, well, you know there are various incentives, um, and some some are very practical, like um, oh my god, I've got to pay some bills, and then there's others that are like um, I got to I got to beat what I did before, and I got to keep growing and keep keep evolving and and then there's luck you know we were really lucky because um we we, had, we were gonna tour america and our, our our hammond player that was that was kind of filling in 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 this lost weekend of 10 15 years where jay our hammond player was was playing with uh with the gallagher brothers <laughs> and you know, we 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 tried to hook up with him, but he was busy, and and that was we understood. It was life had kind of shifted into different um, kind of dimensions. And then when um, this tour came up, and and Harry couldn't do it, we called Jay. He was he was the only guy, and it was it was just very very lucky that he he was at the right time free to do it and wanted to come back and we all hooked up and so it's chemistry you know there's a chemistry that comes when you you all reconnect and uh it has a life of its own yeah really does and i think uh, like a really good band it is always um bigger than any individual member and and it does have a kind of a life and an identity that that shifts and uh, you want to you want to be in a band like that you know like what is this monster <laughs> is are you able to articulate like you talk about the chemistry uh, and that recipe you know the four of you all what you make like what is it that you that the four of you all make that you don't get when any of those guys are not there you know, if I could, if I could really boil it down and analyze it, uh, then I'd be a rich man because it would be the formula for, for success for in any in any endeavor. You know, it is a, it's a magical thing like love and music. You know, no one knows what makes a great what makes a hit either. Nobody knows what makes a great film. People think there's these formulas and da da da, and there's some some pattern and and design involved and craft obviously but in terms of what it is that is that magical ingredient nobody knows uh, i mean you know we did learn to play together as kids you know we from the age of 16 17 18 19 we were all playing together so that you 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 create those impressions and you all actually you've designed yourself to fit together and you know, I don't know why I did that, but we you have. And um, so when we when we when we plug in and 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 start making music, everybody kind of complements each other naturally. It's in our DNA. Yeah. When you've also been around for as long as you guys have been around, I think for some bands, for any band, there's you know little expectations, I think, for the sounds. And and there are the coolest shaker hallmarks. You know, you get those. 
touches of the 60s you get the 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 indian sounds that kind of bring it in is it important to keep those as you go forward or is that more of what you're saying just sort of what happens when you're together this is what you like you know you gotta you use the things you like and that you know and you understand and and you know i think tim burton the filmmaker said he 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 you know he was constantly i'm going to do this now and then i'm going to do this and then he realized i don't know when i mean someone else probably could have told him this <laughs> before but he realized he'd just been making the same film over and over again the story might have been different but you know there was this continuity of what he was trying to get across and i think you find that you you can you got to kind of make peace with the fact that you have one major uh, theme or, or kind of demon that you're wrestling with and you're trying to overcome it and you're trying to you know get get through that uh, in, in everything that you do so yeah um there is a certain reason to it yeah and and to be fair like there are many different sounds on this record we do find those hallmarks within certain songs but uh but the variety is still there i'm looking at the track listing here and gaslighting getting us started which i mean is it fair to say this is sort of your own update on the revolution will not be televised we're taking the piss out of it out of it all yeah i can't we have we do have a problem with taking things seriously and you know um that we you know i mean i can't take death seriously um and that's it doesn't mean that it's not profound and very real <laughs> I guess it's a way of dealing with it. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, you know, the revolution will not be televised. That's still. That's still. Make, that's still relevant today. It still makes a lot of sense. And uh, you know, even even in the age of the internet, you know, the fact that people are trying to communicate and are just constantly up against, you know, gaslighting from from each other, you know, as well as from the man, you know. Um, so you know, how do you deal with it? I mean, there's so much of music and lyric writing is cathartic yeah and you're exercising some stuff oh it's 11 11 look on your clock oh, is that That's right oh it just was 11, 11. just as i looked it up <laughs> are you gaslighting me is that what you're doing right now yeah, yeah. it was never yeah. 11 11 <laughs> but uh you know those those words are important and and it you know whether you're taking the piss out of something or not they land and I, you know i i also bring up i don't want to pay my taxes which goes right into f-bombs beautifully by the way uh you know those lines i don't want to start world war three um i think when you announced this you you even shared a, a picture from mash on your on your socials you know i mean this i don't know maybe the easier thing to hear is just you know obvious you're hitting on some obvious stuff here but but what is on your mind why why did you want to tackle it like this I don't want to pay for World War Three. That was the line. Yeah. Oh, I don't want that's to, my bad. Yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want to pay for that. You know, I want to pay maybe to contribute to the community. You know, we have a tradition of, you know, compassionate, um, you know, uh, sharing here. Not, no, I wouldn't say, you know, it's a political thing. It's very much a, Briti a British thing that we kind of all kind of co contribute and want to contribute. But the idea that you know that you that you spend your money on the war machine, I mean that sucks. Nobody wants that. No, nobody in their right mind wants that. And it was my kid. My kid's, you know, like eight years old, and that's his lyric. It's not mine. He picked if you know, if anybody wants to knock on the door in the middle of the night and drag me off, it's him. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> he came up with that line. He just picked up a guitar and just he just threw that line away. And I just thought it was so good. I said, right, I'm having that. And then we had to go to negotiation and when you know there was some there was some legal tubing things for my eight year old. That's um it's a line that hits me though. It really does. I mean, there are multiple wars always happening and and some of them become in vogue as a hot topic and i don't mean to downplay i don't mean to make light of it but um and i just find myself thinking you're no good taking a side because it's all wrong it's all and, and i'm not projecting to you this is how i hear it as a listener 
you know, it's like everybody, like there are some wars happening out there right now where, where people are getting very angry if you don't take a side. And I thought everybody's wrong and everybody's right. And it's proven itself time and time again. When you wrote this, I don't know if it was out of anger or out of exercising catharsism, whatever it is, but you know, how, how does this, how does this song help you? Yeah, it's catharsis. It's for sure. I mean, you know, when I, when I I say this a lot, and I probably sound like a broken record. You see what I did there? Um, but I mean, when I think of rock and roll, I think of the Marx Brothers, for instance. You know, that like that for me epitomizes what it's about. You know, yes, I think of Jerry Lee Lewis, and I think of Little Richard, and da 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 da, and and then on and on, the Velvet Underground or whatever. <laughs> but I think of the Marx Brothers because. They just, it's just, you just got to trash it. You got to trash the whole thing and let everybody kind of release this kind of pure human emotion, you know, through laughter or music or whatever it is, you know, and it just gives you a sort of clarity. You can step back from all the rhetoric and all of the gaslighting. And, you know, I mean, I know a, a, a very well-known script writer who was very cynical and said, you know, name me one film that ever changed the world, that it ever made any difference. You know, he was, he was uh, I think he'd given up drinking at the time. He was very, very depressed. And you can say the same thing. You know, Bob Dylan wrote Masters of War, right? You know, what's changed? Right. You know, but it doesn't matter. You just got to keep being human and sharing that. And the fact is that we all agree on this and this idea that we're some agree and some don't with this and you're on that side of mine. You just it's just humans versus robots. And that's it. So um, I just want to stay human. And I just want to laugh about it. And I want to sing songs and get on with my life. <laughs> and I will say, you know, to your point too, master like Masters of War, like yeah. I, I was definitely already open to wanting to hear something like that. And it's it's just like when you need to hear a sad song to feel better. There yeah. were certain songs that I needed to hear to justify that I was on the path that I wanted for myself, you know. Yeah. And I got those out of those songs. I really did. Um, which I do think is important that you keep going, that you write these songs that you're writing. And it also should be said that this is also a fun record. You know, I've highlighted three of the tracks here that are very heavy tracks. Yeah. But you know, when you've got the title track with Natural Magic and an Indian record player and and the duets too, uh, I should. Who am I hearing singing with you? Because I don't have the credits with me. So, um, Lavoni is a uh, is a is a local singer from the East End of London, and her family are from Bangladesh. And she's, I think, she was born in Bangladesh, um, she, but she's got this very strong Bangladesh accent. Um, and uh, we wanted somebody, you know, who 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 under, who really understood um, that this Bollywood style of singing, but they understood the retro, the vintage '60s um, movies that we love. I mean, if you want to get your head around some really psychedelic, uh, very sort of cinematic movie scores, if you check out the scores of R.D. Berman and um, Nusraj from the you know the, the 50s and the 60s it, it, you know it's absolutely mind-blowing i mean they're at, they're off their, they're off their heads those guys and I, they really got into morricone and they were really trading ideas and so um she 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 was a uh, she was hooked up with us by himanesh Goswami, who plays tabla and we worked with his father when we were kids so there's a whole family thing going on there which is great and then with uh, Stay With Me Tonight, we were looking for a, a, a kind of country soul voice. And there was a time where there was a discussion going on with Nora Jones, his people, and, and she, she, was, uh, she was too busy making podcasts or something. It didn't happen. And um, we were looking for the right kind of voice because it's, you know, it's not just are you a good singer, it's do you connect do you do you resonate with the other voice and is there a chemistry that you can hear so eventually we luckily we found um al who is uh was near near the studio where we were working down in brighton and i'd heard her sing in a like an open mic night like 10 years before and just very 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 nice tone and lovely person 
and it just worked. We tested it out and it worked. So we're, you know, we're lucky there. It's yeah. not easy. Uh, and I, I was writing duet, that duet just to see if I could actually, it was a challenge that was thrown at me, you know, and um, I, I think it works. You know? It's a great part of the album. It is. Yeah, and we need to give it to Gwen Stefani and her, and her husband to record. <laughs> Make some real money off of it. Make some serious money, yeah. <laughs> And that's and the other one you were talking about with uh, you stole my heart, the Churalia. Uh, I wrote down what a great meeting. It reminded me of do you know the Mavericks, the uh, sort of Tex Mex band, the Mavericks? Um, uh -huh. it's musically, it was like great, such a great meeting of of their style and, and Indian Bollywood style. There, I mean, it's I don't know any other band that pulls that off like you. I really don't. It's just it's so done so well. Well, we're kind of straddling the worlds there, um, and 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 because we 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 really we really are one foot in medieval India and sixties Bollywood, and another one here, you know, or somewhere here in time. Um, and uh, I get it. I get both sides. One thing, like I said, about those mid sixties soundtracks, especially, is they were taking a lot from Morricone. They were really influenced and all the kind of crazy psychedelic detail they were going to town on. So you do sometimes hear an overlap in those recordings as well. Yeah. It's also interesting now that we can look back, especially with your contemporaries, you know, bands that came up in the 80s and 90s, who, by the way, as a fan, what a great time because many of them are making, still making music, you know, Blur and Slow Dive and Ride and, and Liam and Noel, you know, et cetera. And, and then they all sort of and like each one of you took a little piece of psychedelia and made it your own went a different way do you do you keep up with any do you keep up with any, like your contemporaries new music at all i do i do i keep an eye on them make sure that let's see what they're up to um yeah you know uh, ian brown and Liam and and uh, John Squire and uh, they're all still you know putting out good stuff and um, I think you know it's like do you still have something to say I think, that's, I think that's ultimately what it comes down to it 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 is energy and it is it is but I think it really boils down is if you've got something to say if you've got something that you know is really genuine that you're trying to express that tends to be the 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 electricity feed. Similarly, how did you feel about that Beatles track that came out? Well, um, I have, I, I wasn't a huge fan myself, uh, only in terms of whether it was, it should have just been left, you know, it was very expertly done. Mm -hmm. And I, I have worked with Giles Martin in the past and know him, he's, he's not only is he uh, a, a lovely chap, he's very very funny and i did we did work in the studio with him a couple of times when we were kids and even then when he was in his early 20s he already he already looked exactly like his dad so it was strange to sort of look at somebody who sounds and looks exactly like jules martin but um he's he's done an amazing job at, at creating a very polished and well-produced track but i just don't know whether the song itself should be the is it more like an epitaph <laughs> you know <laughs> rather than a, rather than a, a new track it's it's it was rather sad and rather rather down i don't know whether the Beatles should end like that i thought free as a bird was was okay as a you know as a sort of sure. fluttering off into the sky bye john bye you know bye everybody yeah this one seemed to be rather somber. It is. A, I, I will say for myself, I went from being really unimpressed to because I work at a radio station who plays it, having heard it a lot, thinking, what a beautiful song. Hey, like that happens. You hear a song over and over and over and over. And no matter how much you, you felt one way about it, if you hear a song 20 times, you're going to feel different. You, you mentioned uh, a lot of uh, you've, you've mentioned like scores and movies a lot through here. I know that's another big part of what you've done and, and the movies that you've made. I was looking around. Is the winged boy still something that is you're working on? 
Although Wing Boy was a short story that my gra grandmother wrote, <clears throat> and it was the first thing that I sort of developed as a, as a film when I was uh, 26, because I left the band and I started working in, in film as a, as, a, as a writer and doing stuff on spec, you know, and, be, and then ending up sort of in development hell. And that, that, that film uh, strangely got sort of like trapped in a cage um, in a, in a, by a company in Hollywood. So I, I've still got to get it free. It's still stuck there and it's been like 18 years. It's insane. And they sort of, the, the wing boy is currently sort of being held at gunpoint by some, <laughs> some bunch of lawyers, but it'll, it'll, I'll get it back eventually. Nuts that that it's nuts so that that can still happen. So Sorry, what's... Why did you ask about that? Uh, you know, I, I I went on the not always trustworthy IMDb just to see oh. if anything popped up, and that one's one that still said um, right, yes. or writing or something like that. And I thought, oh, I wonder what's happened with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. IMDb knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you're working on on the film side? Well, I, I've been working with Simon Pegg on and off for years. It's so strange. We were, we, it was it was never sort of um, planned or anticipated. We just always ended up bumping into each other and talking about something and wanting to work with each other on it. And so, um, yeah, I'm working on a, a show with Simon called Technicolor Time Machine, <laughs> which has been going on for years. And um, it's been it's been it's been a, a, a bit of a saga. But so many of, you know, with film, so much of it is the fight to get it made. You know, with, with when you make an album, you, you're fighting for that album to be heard. Usually the making of is, is a quite, um, you know, is a, is a musical experience. And then the, the, business, the business fight comes afterwards. But with film, you have to fight and fight and fight and fight just to get it made. You know, and then and then and then there's that fight so that you know it actually resembles what you imagined in the first place. And then there's a third fight, which is to to get people to 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 see it and hear about it. So it's much more complicated. It's much tougher on the the you know the creatives to 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 protect it. But you got to kind of be addicted, at, at, you know, and in and totally in love with with film and the process of doing it in order to survive that and not go completely batshit. Yeah. My filmmaking friends, the line I hear them say most is, it's a miracle a movie can be made at all. Just any movie. It's a miracle if it makes it to the finish line. You've got to believe in miracles. Hallelujah. <laughs> and some to... natural magic while you're at it. And... That's the way I'll wrap this back around. This record is so good. I'm always so happy when you're making new music. Seriously, Crispin, thank you so much for continuing to do what you do, and especially for taking the time to talk about it. I really appreciate this. My pleasure. All right, take care. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.